on this month's sermon on Positive Church. I want to talk about a human condition and a human need. One of the biggest problems in a human being is worry, and a sister of that is fear. Actually, the two are intertwined and almost become as one. Worry and fear are only in the human mind, not in the mind of God. When you have faith, it is something that will lift you out of fear. It will lift you out of worry. And it will begin to mend the habit of doing those both inside of you. There was a woman that was absolutely paralyzed with worry. Every day she found something new to worry about. And I saw this woman who was relatively young, then in her early 30s, literally transform and become old. And over 10 years or so, watching her, I saw her literally disintegrate because of what she held inside. If you drank poison every day, even a little bit of poison, you know what would happen to your physical body and your physical mind. You would deteriorate. You would be poisoning yourself. Often we don't think that worry or fear could do that to us, and yet it does. And it does many other things. It holds us back. It blocks us. It keeps us behind barriers that we ourselves erect. What would you do in your life if there wasn't any worry? What would you do with your life if there wasn't any fear? I don't even think that we can answer the question. Because truthfully, in human mind, we do not know totally how to do that. And yet when we go to God and ask for faith, faith will come. Now faith is perhaps not what you've thought about it to be. You've often thought about faith as something you need to generate up entirely, that you need to hold inside of you, that you need to do. I say to you that faith is a gift of God. It is a power that you can have from God. It is God-given. And it will help to overpower the lesser parts of us and help us to become totally, totally beyond anything that we have known. So many of us know about the sum of us. And that is S-O-M-E. We have some mistakes of the past, some faults, some limitations, some bad habits that we hold in a closet ourselves. We don't share that with others, but we constantly share it with ourselves. And therefore, we become a product of the sum, S-O-M-E, of ourselves. I tell you, though, you are the sum of all parts, and that is S-U-M, that you have a spiritual ingredient to you, God-given, you are heir to it, you were born with it, you have it every day of your life. And the talents and gifts of God that can come to you, most are not even opened yet, discovered yet, or received yet. And one of those gifts and one of those talents can be faith, purified faith. Now, if I have debris at the bottom of a pitcher, let's say it's mud, and I pour purified crystal spring water into that pitcher, at first it will come up all mucky and muddy, and then it will overflow. And it will keep flowing if I keep pouring in the purified, and eventually, you know what happens, the pitcher is clean. Well, the Bible says to clean the inside first, and then the outside is clean. 
You might not have ever thought about cleaning yourself on the inside from the habit of worry or the habit of fear, and yet that's exactly what you must do. When you consent to this, when you allow God to come through with faith, you begin to be fortified, you begin to have strength, and you begin to realize that 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 you're worried about, that that you have fear over, well, that's taking away the missing ingredient. And the missing ingredient is God. The opposite of God, the opposite of faith, is worry. The opposite of God, the opposite of faith, is fear. So how do you do this? Well, it is an ongoing thing. Because we're in human body and in human mind, it is ongoing for a lifetime. And you will forget, you will fall back, that's the fall of man, as talked about in the Bible, where you forget momentarily on certain days. Maybe you're fatigued or you have a problem just come to you and stare at you right in the face. And then what we tend to do is go back to the old human ways of dealing with something. Well, I'm going to fear this. Well, I'm going to worry about this. I'm going to toss and turn. I'm going to make myself sick. I'm going to become like a deer on the railroad tracks and become frozen. Well, you know that there's a better way because you're spiritually mature. And you know that the sum of you, S-U-M, is much more than sum of you, S-O-M-E. Yeah, sure, some of us is filled with worry and fear. We have that as part of our human mind and our life experience. But there is much more. There is more to be uncovered. There is a power in you that you have only tapped a little bit. Even me. There's always more of God to discover. So, how do we do this? Well, here's how. First thing, every day, say to yourself, now this is an affirmation. An affirmation is not to change God, it is to remind us continually, if we have to say it a hundred times, to remind us to begin to turn our mind around so we can again remember. And this is Positive Church, and a church is a remembrance society. I'm teaching you that that you already know, but may have temporarily forgotten. You say to yourself, worry is just a very bad mental habit. And I can change any habit with God's help. And therefore, in this time, when you say that, you remember, you recall, and you go to God. And as you go to God, you expect marvelous things to happen, and they will. Now, this woman that I told you the story of, that literally was making herself old through worry, well, she finally, finally prayed for faith. Faith to infill her purified faith that would bring up the old muck and mire that she held so long. Now, it took her longer because she had layer after layer after layer of years, decades of worry cemented with fear. She began to feel, after about six months, a new freedom, a new lightness inside of her. She actually said to me, that she had days where she didn't worry. That was a major victory for her. Days where she felt alive. Days where she could enjoy a few hours without being fixed on what's wrong. Usually, worry is fixed about not what has happened, 
but what may happen in our imaginations. And she changed her imagination around to imagining the very best that could possibly happen with the presence of God. Now, number two on changing the worry habit. You become a worrier by practicing worry. Now, if you were learning to play an instrument, you were going to the health club and trying to, to get a skill on a certain type of machine, you would do that through positive practice. But there's also negative practice. And this is positive Christianity. We have to realize that we become a worrier through practice of worry. I've never known a baby that its first words were, Oh my, I fear what is going to happen next. <laughs> no, it is through practice. Sometimes as a young child, but usually later than that, learn to become very proficient at worry and then very proficient at fear and anxiety. And we become so good at it that, my golly, we become an expert in that, an expert in the negativity of all that could possibly, possibly ever go wrong in life. So you realize looking worry right in the face that this is a bad mental habit that you don't have to have any longer. And you practice the opposite. Every time you worry, you practice the opposite with a stronger God-given habit of faith. And with all the strength, with all the perseverance that you can command, you start to practice, practice faith. You start to practice faith instead of practicing worry. And you become proficient at faith. And when you do that, you'll find a difference in not only how you feel inside, but every aspect of your life. Now, number three. How do you practice faith? Again, it is reminding yourself. And one of the best ways to remind yourself is first thing, when you open up your eyes in the morning, before you even crawl out of bed, you remind yourself of God's power. You simply say this affirmation aloud. I believe. And then again, I believe. And then a third time, I believe. Not only thinking about this, but feeling it deep with inside of you. I believe. I believe. I believe. And then you spring into the day. And you do it with a new bounce in your step. You'll find that every day that you do this, it becomes more powerful, you'll also see that your day changes. Now, number four, pray using this formula. I place this day, my life, my loved ones, my work in God's hands. There is no harm in God's hands, only good. Whatever happens, whatever results, if I am in God's hands, it is God's will, and it is good. When you do this, when you pray in this way, it can be revolutionary to you. Prayer is to remind you, to change you. That's why Jesus said to pray continuously. It's not to change a moody God. 
It's to change you, to change your perception, to uplift you. And if you're praying correctly, you will be changed. But if you're praying incorrectly, you won't. Now, if you feel worse after you've prayed than before, perhaps you're doing it wrong. Here's the wrong way. Oh, God, 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 I'm worried about this. I am in such fear. I'm trembling inside of myself. How can I ever get out of this mess that I'm in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, after a prayer like that, you can make yourself sick. What you pray for tends to come upon you magnified many times over. Practice number five. Practice saying something positive concerning everything that you've been talking negative about. Talk positive. For example, don't say something like this. Oh, this is going to be a terrible day, a terrible day at work, etc. Instead, affirm with faith, this is going to be a glorious day. Don't say, I'll never be able to do that. Instead, affirm, with God's help, I will do that. You see the difference? And the difference speaks to you. When you're all alone and talking to yourself, you might feel, well, I'm all alone. I can say anything negative that I want to say. Don't you believe it, my friend? You have a trillion cells in your mind and your body that are listening to you and believing everything you tell them. When you uplift your talk to yourself when you're alone, it will uplift your life. It will unblock you. You'll begin to change. Then you do all these things alone and you go to work. We often have prayer requests like this one. Well, I'm surrounded with all these negative people, and I can't help myself. I just seem to be sucked in to the negativity, and then all of a sudden, I'm the leader of the negativity, where I am talking more negative than anyone else. People say this about their family life, too. For at least 30 days... While you're going through this crucial retraining period, you have to be extra gentle with you. And that means to go the extra mile. Number six, never participate in a worry conversation. I'm going to repeat that at least for 30 days. Never participate in a worry conversation. And people will say, but Chris, you don't understand. I have this job and people around me are worriers. They're filled with fear. Well, this is where you become a true spiritual person, a Christian going the extra mile. That doesn't mean to convert them to your way of thinking. You convert another by becoming something yourself, and then other people want it. Here's what you're going to do. If you find yourself in a worry conversation, I ask you to shoot an injection of faith into all the conversations. Now, I tell you I've done this many times, and people that are used to you worrying with them used to you being in fear with them, they'll be shocked. They'll either do one of two things. They'll either run from you, or they will sit back, hopefully instantly, but maybe over time, they'll begin to listen and begin to feel the light of God coming through you. When you inject 
faith into all your conversations, you are giving an inoculation of something that is one of the most catching things that we can catch as a human being. And that is faith and belief and hope. Do you know why? Because everyone at the core of their soul, they're starved for this. They're not starved for worry. They're not starved for fear. They are starved for faith. Now, my friend, a group of people talking pessimistically can infect every other person in the group with negativism rather than talking things down. You can drive off that depressing atmosphere and make everyone feel hopeful and happy again. Everyone prays that they want to make a difference with their life. Well, you'll never make a difference with your life by projecting negativity, by projecting worry, by projecting fear, and having other people catch that. You'll make a difference. You'll be following your purpose as a spiritual human being by injecting faith and how valued you will be in your workplace. You can't imagine. I could tell you countless stories of people that have received major promotions by changing this one aspect. You think no one's watching, but in truth, everyone is watching. And even when you're not saying a thing, there is a difference in your countenance. People can feel it. They can sense it coming from you. They'll want some of it, including your employer. Number seven. One reason that we become worriers is that our mind is literally saturated with apprehension thoughts, defeat thoughts, and even gloomy thoughts. To counteract these thoughts, I ask you to get a highlighter and mark every passage in the Bible that speaks of faith, hope, happiness, glory, radiance, and begin to read those over and over again during the day or before you go to bed, and as much as possible commit each of these positive Bible quotes to memory. Say them repeatedly until these creative, wonderful thoughts saturate your subconscious mind, your memory mind. And then your memory mind returns to it what is put into it. Your subconscious will return to you what you have given it. Mainly optimism, not worry. And you will be changed. People always pray when things aren't going right for change. And yet real change, permanent change, has to happen from the center of you to the circumference of you and then overflowing into your life. One of the biggest ways that you can change is changing worry and fear into positive faith that overflows from you to touch everyone that comes near you. Now, let's talk about those that come near you. Number eight, I ask you to cultivate friendships with hopeful people. You say, perhaps, you're surrounded right now with negative people. Well, find positive people. Find positive people in your church. Find positive people in support groups. Wherever you need to go, go there. Surround yourself with positive peers that can talk with you, not in the old human ways, but in faith-filled, optimistic, hopeful ways. Surround yourself with friends who think positive, 
faith-producing thoughts, who contribute to a creative atmosphere. This will keep you energized weekly with faith attitudes. And when you do this, you'll also energize them back. And you'll go back to where you came from, and you'll energize in a multiplied way the people that aren't yet energized in this way of thinking. You are agreeing to change from worry. You're agreeing to eliminate fear from your life through the practice of these principles. Principle number nine. See how many people you can help cure from the worry habit. This is a wonderful hobby that I've practiced before. In helping another to overcome worry, you get greater power over it yourself. Now, there's an old saying that teachers have used. You generally teach what you need to learn. And as you teach it, you become proficient at it, as well as spreading the knowledge and making others proficient. This is what Jesus did. This is what you must do also. This becomes one of the great, wonderful joys of life when you take up a positive hobby like this. Principle number 10. Every day of your life, I want you to conceive of yourself as living in a partnership, a companionship with Jesus Christ. If he actually walked by your side, would you be worried or afraid? No matter where you were, what you had to face, or what you were facing down the road, would you be worried? I don't think so. Because you would know that he has your back, he has your side, and truly he walks in front of you preparing the way for your good. Well, constantly remind yourself through the day and in the middle of the night, He is with me. Affirm aloud, I am with you always. I am with you always. And then change it to say, He is with me now. He is with me now. He is with me now. Repeat that affirmation at least three times every day. I found the more you use it, the more it helps you. And in a short period of time, you can break the worry habit and take on new positive habits by becoming the sum, S-U-M, of your potential in God. God bless you. My friend, I will be more than happy to share with you by sending you the 10 principles on how to break the worry habit for any donation to Positive Christianity. Simply send your request mentioning how to break the worry habit to Positive Christianity, Box 7993, The Woodlands, Texas, 77380, or on our website, you can make a donation and put it in the comments box that you want this sent to you. PositiveChristianity.org God bless you.